Hello students and welcome to the online session. Myself Dr. S. R. Patil. I am working as assistant professor at the SVKT Arts, Science and Commerce College Devadali Camp in the Department of Chemistry. Dear students, once again today's session for the TYBSC class and subject is the environmental chemistry. Dear student, we know that in our previous session we had started the chapter number 4 that is the waste treatment and effluent management. In the today's session, we, had co we have continued the same chap discussion on the same chapter, water treatment and effluent management. Before starting today's session, we take the recap of our previous session. In our previous session, we had discussed about the some introductory part of water treatment and waste management. Then we had also discussed about the domestic sewage and the wastewater treatment. In the previous session, we had discussed about the steps involved in the municipal water treatment. And then we had discussed about the sewage treatment. There are four stages of the sewage treatment. Out of these four stages, in the previous session, we had discussed the first two stages. That is the first stage we had discussed in our previous session is the preliminary wastewater treatment and second stage we had discussed that is the primary or mechanical waste treatment. Okay. Now uh, today we continue the sewage treatment and we here discuss the stage number three that is the secondary or biological waste treatment in detail. In that uh, we have discussed about the aerobic treatment then about the trickling filters, then we have discussed about the activated sludge process, oxidation ponds, anaerobic treatment and uh, at the final of this session, uh, we have discussed about the important features of a secondary or biological treatment. These All these points we have covered in our today's session. Now the learning objective of today's sessions in that after the uh, end of this, this session, students should know about the importance of water, importance of the um, water pollution and about the different water, wastewater treatments. Okay. In that first, uh, we discuss the uh, stage number third, that is the secondary or biological waste treatment for the uh, sewage. We know that as uh, early session, we had already discussed the first two stages. Okay, Prime, preliminary wastewater treatment and uh, primary wastewater treatment, primary or mechanical wastewater treatment. And the third stage is the secondary or biological waste treatment. We know that the biological processes are involved in a secondary waste treatment, like the aerobic or anaerobic microorganisms are used for uh, effective degradation of organic matter. First we discuss about the aerobic treatment. We know that this treatment involves the oxidation of dissolved and colloidal organic compounds in the presence of microorganisms like the uh, pseudomonas, nitrospires and nitrosomonas. These are the different microorganisms which are involved in this process. Okay. As a result, the complex hazardous organic compounds are the biodegraded into the simple harmless inorganic compounds such as the NH3 ammonia, sulfates and the phosphate. These are the aerobic treatment. So the sufficient quantity of dissolved oxygen is essential uh, condition for uh, this aerobic process. So this can be achieved usually the oxidation may be used. This is about the aerobic treatment. Next important point about the stage number three for the purification of sewage waste water that is the trackling filters. These are called as the percolating or a sprinkling filters also. This consists of the uh, circular or rectangular beds usually three to five centimeters at the top and the 10 to 15 centimeter at the base with a depth one to 3 meter. This is a construction of uh, trackling filters. How it is a... Uh, so they are provided the bricks or concrete walls and the beds are filled with the clinkers, sludge, 
stones, coals, etc. materials. Such a medium is useful for the growth of a microorganisms, bacteria, okay, and which plays an important role in a water purification. When water trackles over these biological layers, okay, and the microorganism in the presence of dissolved oxygen breaks down the decomposition of organic impurities like uh, into the carbon dioxide, water, phosphate, nitrates and sulfates, okay, and a brown insoluble, insoluble humus material is formed, okay. This is the diagram of a trackling filter. This is the setup of the trackling filter is useful for the um, purification of the uh, sewage water. Then the uh, certain disadvantage of these uh, trackling filters, okay, out of this it is a, a time consuming process and the percolating filters are associated with the unpleasant odor. These are important disadvantage of these uh, trackling filters, okay, some of uh, problems are associated with the trackling filters also that avoided by the activated sludge method. Okay, in the next uh, point is the activated sludge process. What is exactly the activated sludge process is useful for the purification of uh, sewage water. We know that it is one of the most versatile and effective of all the uh, wastewater treatment methods. The microorganisms uh, in the aeration tanks convert the organic matter to the uh, biomass. Okay, the microorganisms which are used in the aeration tanks are converted the organic matter into the biomass, carbon dioxide and water. We know that the organic nitrogen is converted into ammonia or nitrate ions, NH4 plus or NO3 minus ions. Organic phosphorus is converted into the orthophosphate ions like H2PO4 minus. That the activated sludge process has a low retention time highly effective in the winters okay, and the summer. No odor is originated from the plant and biological oxygen demand removals up to the 95%. Okay, These are the advantages over the trackling filters for the activated sludge process. However, the high sludge production and its disposal is a problem because uh, due to that activated sludge process there is a, a large amount of sludge is produced in this process and due to the uh, excess amount the disposal problem is uh, uh, arrival for this uh, activated sludge process. Another important drawbacks uh, is that the energy is required for the aeration for this process which makes the process expensive because uh, aeration is most important uh, part of this process and uh, to uh, fulfill that aeration condition it requires the um, large uh, number of um, energy. So this is the most important drawback of this process. So uh, along with the uh, uh, drawbacks there are some important features of that activated search process. Here we discuss some features like uh, it is a biological treatment process and in this process a mixture of sewage and activated sludge is mixed together and then aerated. Second one is the sludge is after separated from the uh, treated sewage by the process of sedimentation techniques and the uh, treated sewage overflows the settling tanks. Third important features of this activated sludge process is that the activated sludge is achieved by settling sewage in the presence of excess oxygen. Okay. Next uh, important feature is that the activated sludge is the sludge which uh, settles down after the sewage has been freely aerated and agitated for a fixed time. It is a biological, uh, biologically active process and contains a large number of uh, aerobic bacteria and some other microorganisms also. Okay. Next important feature is that the important properties of activated sludge okay, in that it contains the uh, uh, fertilizing uh, components than uh, the color of activated sludge uh, shows the degree of aeration. From the color uh, we can um, analyze the degree of aeration of that sludge. The under uh, aeration sludge has the light brown color whereas the aerated sludge has a golden brown color. 
while the over aeration problem is there also and when the over aeration is there has a muddy um, brown color okay from the color we can um, know about the degree of aeration and third important point is the activated sludge contain as high as 95 to 97 percent of water okay next uh, point uh, concerned with the uh, stage 3 for the purification of sewage water there is oxidation ponds we know that these ponds are used in the warmer climate to purify polluted water through an interaction between the uh, bacteria and sludge sorry bacteria and algae so the uh, advanced uh, sorry uh, average depth of that pond is 1 meter the waste water is allowed it to pass through the pond at the slow speed okay and the bacteria present in the pond decompose the uh, biodegradable organic matter which are present in that uh, waste water in that the dissolved oxygen is utilized uh, in this process and the carbon dioxide nitrate and phosphates are generated out of these uh, generated product the nitrate and phosphate are consumed by algae as a as a food material while the uh, carbon dioxide is used in the photosynthesis process as a result of oxygen is generated and this uh, dissolved oxygen which was consumed in the microbial degradation of that organic matter is replaced and the cycle is start again that is the utilization of the oxygen which are uh, generated or which are formed in the photosynthesis process next important step is the anaerobic treatment we know that under the anaerobic conditions the organic waste matter is uh, degraded and converted into useful acid and gases there are three important steps are involved under the specified conditions first step is the hydrolytic step in this step where the organic uh, biopolymers are converted into monomers second step involves the fermentation of monomers to volatile acids and alcohols at the uh, general 35 degrees celsius and at the uh, ph 5 to 6 and the third step is the methanogenesis at the 45 degrees celsius and for that the required ph is 6 to 8 okay and the methane and carbon dioxide is formed in these steps near about 95 percent biodegradable uh, biodegradable carbon is converted into the biomass in the anaerobic treatment process the microorganisms responsible for the anaerobic degradations are the actinomycins citrobacters and the lactobacillus these are the bacteria which are responsible that is these are the microorganisms which are responsible for the anaerobic degradation and that a fungus also called as a ray fungus may of the uh, antibiotic drugs are produced from this genus and this anaerobic treatment uh, recovers of gases and the sludge is employed by using the various suitable techniques in that one such a process is based on the uh, settleability of microbial flora and this uh, produces a region at the bottom of the tank and high biomass concentration is maintained in that tank so the effluent is filled at the bottom of the tank through the base of the sludge blanket and therefore that process is known as of flow aeration sorry of flow aerobic sludge blanket or bed process and short form is that u a s b u stand for up flow a stand for anaerobic s stand for sludge b for the blanket or bed that is the u s sorry u a s b up flow anaerobic sludge blanket or bed process this process has a high loading capacity which produces the energy that is the biomass okay that requires the less space and is less expensive as compared to aerobic process this is the some um, advantages of this anaerobic treatment over the aerobic treatment it fulfill the conditions of uh, integrated environmental 
protection system also okay then this is the flow sheet for the anaerobic treatment we know that for the anaerobic uh, waste water treatment we use the liquid waste industrial waste uh, domestic waste then the uh, slurries of uh, sewage and liquid manure then the solid waste and the biomass and uh, from all these uh, anaerobic waste water treatment the liquid effluents are formed which uh, then from that we use the post treatment method for giving the clean water and the uh, material sludge material uh, which recover for the fertilizers like ammonia salt phosphate salts and for the food content and also we can recover a recovery of the sulfur and raw material okay this is the flow sheet we had already discussed in detail okay so the solid material that settled down during the primary and the secondary stage of wastewater treatment is called as the sludge which is a settled down at the bottom of the tank okay and the disposal of that sludge is a difficult task because it is a very uh, bulk in quantity and it is a uh, putrescibles due to its uh, high organic content okay and they hence the wastewater purification plant have and the independent unit for the um, pre treatments and the disposal of the sludge because they form in a very uh, large quantity okay they, then next important uh, point about the sludge disposal okay for the sludge uh, they give the um, gravity thickening then the digestion of aerobic and uh, through the aerobic and uh, and anaerobic treatment and uh, apply the some uh, conditioning methods like the chemical methods and physical method in the chemical techniques the preliminary process of coagulation by the addition of uh, chemical coagulate coagulants and uh, due to that uh, um, they uh, gives the um, next treatment like uh, drying beds uh, centrifugation and the vacuum filtration while in the physical treatment the heat treatment process is provided due to the in that there is a, a pressure filtration and heat drying processes are there and due to these processes after that there is a oxidation process by the wet air oxidation or incineration is provided to the sludge, sludge disposal and then final disposal is uh, taken out and due after that they use in a land recombination so land fillings or ocean disposal these are the uh, sludge disposal chart or sludge disposal treatment given in the uh, chart form or in the diagram form so the pre treatment of sludge is called as a sludge digestion technique okay it is uh, placed in the two step in the first step the sludge is heated in a closed tank to a treat temperature near about 27 to 35 degree celsius for the 7 to 30 days then the microorganisms present in the sludge start its uh, degradation okay and the amount of oxygen is quickly exhausted due to that degradation process and hence most of the decomposition takes place in anaerobically so then the more resistant materials such as the proteins fatty acids are attacked and large volume of gases evolve during the anaerobic biodegradation of the sludge and it is known as a sludge gases okay and important feature of this secondary or biological treatment uh, discuss here first one is the it is include the uh, process such as the filtration and the activated sludge processes we had already discussed this in detail the effluent from the primary treatment contain about the 45 to 50% of unstable organic matter originally present in that sewage uh, treatment or in the uh, sewage content large solids are removed by the settlement in the sedimentation tank and the organic matter is uh, carried away by the effluent from the settling tank second important feature of this process is the important function of this treatment is to convert the remaining organic matter into the stable form by the oxidation or uh, nitrification process third important feature of this process is the various filters which are generally used are the uh, contact beds then the intimate sand uh, filters then the trackling filters okay and this process of filtration removes finally divided the suspended matter another important feature of this secondary process is 
in the activated process sewage is treated biologically they give the biological treatment for the sewage okay the matter which settle down at the bottom of the tank after the treatment is called as the sludge and the liquid is called as a effluent okay the sludge is disposed of by dumping into the seas or as a drying beds okay these are the some important feature of these uh, secondary technique or the second stage of the uh, sewage treatment dear student here we discuss about the summary of today's session in this session we had uh, discussed the sewage treatment uh, third stage that is the secondary or biological waste treatment in that we had discussed the uh, aerobic treatment then we had discussed about the trackling filters then we had discussed about the activated sludge process oxidation ponds anaerobic treatment and finally we had discussed some important features of the secondary or biological treatment dear student this is all about the today's session in the next session we will continue this point sewage treatment and in that session we will discuss the stage number 4 for the purification of uh, waste sewage waste water and that stage is a tertiary or the advanced biological chemical treatment for the waste water okay thank you very much